Animals brighten our lives. Grateful Rescue TV. A look at the great things happening at Grateful Rescue and Sanctuary in Muncie, Indiana. Pamela Trehune shares the stories of people working to save dogs and cats. Grateful Rescue TV. In this barn, it's a rescue and it has over a hundred animals, but it might not be what you expect. We live just outside of Red Key, Indiana on six acres. Um, and what we do with most of our animals is we love to share them. Carolyn Pope and John Betts have a big heart for rescuing animals, and they almost have too many rescues to count. We have five miniature horses. I got miniature donkey, got mammoth, jack stock, which is mammoth donkeys. We have regular sized donkeys. We've got peacocks. We've got Sebastopol geese. We have Ancona ducks. We've got Narragansett turkeys. Uh, we have runner ducks. We have call ducks. We have the fainting goats. We have the regular goats that you saw over here. I can't count how many cats. Um, the three dogs and one of them came from Grateful. She's been with us for it'll be nine weeks tomorrow that she's been with us. The one we got from Grateful is the little, little Bella, little four pound Bella, and she is just an absolute doll. I mean, she, uh, I just, uh, we, we already had two other little, little dogs, but we, we, we got her and she just, just kind of like, she just completed the family, I think. She just, just, just fit right in and she's just an absolute doll. I mean, I've, I've never seen a dog so small in my life, little four pounds of nothing there. The one that started it all for our dogs, Dave, he'll be nine in November. And Dave is also the one we started a Facebook page with. Um, we retired him a year ago because of a degenerative disc disease, which is where Hudson came in. But all of our animals are fixed. Um, the only thing that we have, or that we've added to, has been the peacocks um, and chickens, but that's very controlled. With all of these rescued animals, Caroline and John like to take time to give back to their community with the help from their rescued family. My favorite thing, nothing I love any more than taking the dogs or one of the animals in nursing homes because um, they absolutely love it. And we um, look for the residents who don't have visitors, don't have family or whatever. Uh, with the other animals, it's more about the kids. Um, they get more to kids events, um, so we'll take them out in most, a lot of kids, I mean, when they're holding their chickens, that's the first chickens they've ever held. Or they're petting a, whore, a miniature horse, it's the first horse they've ever pet. And it's just things they don't get to see real often. Um, I, I really love to do the events. Um, anytime I can share our animals at their events, that uh, we always do. Um, we also do a motorcycle ride for them that, that John and I um, do ourselves to help benefit Grateful. They love to take time to help out Grateful Rescue whenever they can going to events like Grateful Fest and volunteering their time with their rescues. Pamela and her, her the Grateful is just an awesome, awesome organization. It's just, uh, like I say, I, uh, I, we do everything we can for them. Anytime they need help, we're, we're right there. And uh, I just, just love being a part of what she is. I mean, it's just, uh, Pam's got a great heart. I mean, she, you know, she, she works tirelessly on, on, on what she does, and it's just uh, anytime she needs our help, we're right there. She and I, we think a lot outside the box um, because, you know, a lot of people do the same continuous type things. Um, and so I, she just has a great heart. I mean, she has a great heart, especially for animals, um, for the people who've been with her for four or five years trying to help get this off the ground. Um, so, like I said, anything that I can do for her, I'm going to do 100%. Both Caroline and John share a passion for caring for these animals, and it brought them together. John shared with us why he started rescuing in the first place. I've seen a lot of different situations. I've seen a lot of animals not being taken care of very well. And it made me think, why do I, why am I raising these when there's so many of them out there that need, need my help anyway? So, I quit raising mules and jackstock and I just started rescuing them because I just, I felt sorry for the conditions they were under. And uh, cause you know, this is not something you do just when you feel like it. This is morning and night you deal with this. I, you know, I, I start out here at 2.30 in the morning, every morning before I go to work, taking care of all the animals. And then as soon as when I get home at night, I'm back out here again for another five, six hours at night taking care of them. To rescue as many animals as Caroline and John have, it takes a lot of passion and a lot of work, but they do this all out of love. You know, I love it when I, when I come home and they see me pulling the driveway, all of them, from the chickens, the donkeys, the mules, all of them, they're just, you know, they're welcoming me home when I get there. They, they can't, well, I think they want food's what they want, but uh, 
they just they know your home and it's just uh, the whole place just comes to life whenever you pull in the driveway. For Grateful Rescue TV, I'm Adam Byers Dunn. Grateful TV with the story of Jazzy. I saw this on your Facebook page. I haven't met her yet, but Jazzy had Kennelitis. K E N N E L I T I S. Very good. What is Kennelitis? Oh gosh, Patty, Kennelitis is where they where they basically go crazy in 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 their living space because the they've been yeah. because they've been cooped up so long. Oh. Um, one of the first indications, and in shelters I've worked in before, if um, if they start spinning in their in their living space, yeah. they've lost their mind and they're shortly euthanized uh, oh. shortly after. Um, so so we got a call that Jazzy was um, exhibiting kenilitis. Spinning. We pulled her out and we took her to a foster home. Uh, we were out of space, but a foster uh, gratefully took her. But all she did in in their yard was spin. Even in the spent. yard, she's spinning. In Frio, yeah. Once you pull them out of there, it's once you pull them out of that um, state, it's you can't pull them out of that state. I, you you yeah. don't know of any other ones that have recovered from. Kennelitis. I've never seen it, um, but uh, to be honest with you, a lot of them are put down as soon as they exhibit it. Right. Okay. But we have Jazzy, and Jazzy went to her foster home, spun out of control. But you got her. They brought her to us and she walks in and she has this calmness about her. They're in love. <laughs> I saw the pictures of, of she hasn't she's spun in your face. once. She hasn't. she hasn't spun once. And the ladies who brought her, they said, you need to check this out. I hadn't seen it in person. And she comes walking in and she just comes strutting in very oh. calmly looking around. And the ladies uh, that brought her there, like their jaws are hitting oh. the ground. Well, you like, know, it, I can't it, believe she's not spinning. It's your it's your demeanor. You're so calm, and they sense that, and they go, "Oh, I can relax now. Finally, you don't you don't put any pressure on them." So, Jazzy, it's a great you. testament. I want to cry about Jazzy. Oh, it, uh, me too, yeah. because we she was such a sweet dog, and we thought, "Oh my goodness, we're going to have to euthanize her. Yeah. She can't she can't lead a quality yeah. life." Right. And um, and uh, it, it's a great testament to the grateful rescue, stress free living. Um, they can even sense it when they walk through the door. Yep. And Harry wants to meet Jazzy. Harry, you want to meet Jazzy? <laughs> She's a good girl. <laughs> we'll be back with more on Grateful TV. I go cry. <laughs> My name is Alessia. This is Mazakin. And uh, we are looking forward to give you great tips here on Grateful Rescue TV. So this is Mazakin. She's a mutt. Um, I believe between a Malinois and something else. <laughs> I could never figure that out. Um, Mazakin showed up in my backyard on uh, July 3rd of uh, 2020 and um, she pretty much stayed with me. Uh, her level of energy is pretty high so to have her in this position and uh, just to keep having her on the bench with me that took a lot of practice and there you go you talk and then she starts doing things. Mazakin! That's cute. That's yeah, cute. Brava, yeah, Yoki. I know you don't like it. There you go. Brava, metti di giù, metti di giù a terra. Brava, mamma What language are you speaking to her in, and, and why? I am from Italy, so my dog was trained in Italian because that's the first language that came in my mind. I found it to be very helpful to speak with her in Italian because most of the times I need to instruct her in certain ways and then I will have other dogs around and I can refer to them in different languages so they will be able to follow two different cues because they have been, you know, instructed in two different uh, languages pretty much. And today we are going to show you how to properly play with your dog. So Mazakin loves tennis balls. Okay. When I'm playing with my dog and using toys, I am very careful of the do toys that I choose to play with. Um, you can play different manners. Um, Mazakin loves uh, playing with tennis balls and retrieving them. Um, there are other things that you can use, uh, such as a flirt ball. So if we're going for a flirt ball, this is how it looks like. It's like a giant cat toy, pretty much. The attachment, uh, you can switch and swap however you like. 
and uh, the way this is gonna work is for dogs that have high prey drive so dogs that love to uh, chase squirrels dogs that love to chase cats all of those kind of dogs um, you are gonna pretty much uh, move it on the floor and have the dog attach and bite to it and once they attach to it this is elastic so they you can now play like a tug of war you can have different uh, tags and toys so you have different ropes this used to be an old uh, uh, fur from my coat it's fake but it works it makes the trick happening and she likes to hold on to it and um, pretty much we are now battling to win this I don't necessarily like that while playing there is a, a weak and a strong part so that's why we take turns so one time the dog has the ability to latch on and then pull and have the toy that you're battling with and the other time it is important that I keep it to keep a balance in the relationship as well so another good thing that I always advise uh, people to do is to store their toys away when they are not playing with their dog uh, so if a toy is laying around the house most likely it's gonna lose their value so that means that the dog will start not being that interested anymore after a while because it's just another object in their house uh, dog don't play with toys alone and if they do they really need a companion uh, toy can be very great tools to establish a lovely relationship with your dog toys shouldn't be left out but they should be special for your dog and used as treats as rewards so motivation um, for what the dog needs to do my name is Alessia this is Mazakin and uh, we are looking forward to give you great tips here on Grateful Rescue TV And welcome back to Grateful Rescue TV. We're here with Tom Doc from Noah's Animal Hospital. Hi, Tom. Hi. We're going to talk about allergies today. Itchy pets. So many of them oh, all around. Itchy pets. Yep. We have two itchy pets right here. Oh, I heard. And I heard um, this one here is really itchy too, just like Carrie. Yep, yep. And both of them come from rescue and they both came to us with hardly any hair. Yep. And you know, here's the thing. It's not just mixed breed dogs. It's not just purebred dogs, even cats. 20% of the animals that go into a regular veterinary office on a daily basis have some sort of skin issue. Wow, and what do you do for that? Well, there's lots of things. First of all, you've got to get an examination done, okay? If your pet's chewing, if you see dark mm -hmm. saliva stains on their paws, if they're itching constantly, if they're keeping you up at night because of their itching and chewing, then you need to see a veterinarian. Mm. First and foremost, make sure that they are on some good flea and tick control, okay? Mm -hmm. Whether it's dog or whether it's cat, all pets in the household need to be on flea and tick control because that's the most important issue here. It's the most common reason that dogs are itchiness. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. He had, uh, Reese had the allergies from fleas um, as well. So. And the thing that's so scary sometimes is we get multi pet households mm -hmm. and people say, well, look, Reese's so itchy, but I don't see any fleas. Well, Reese's really good at catching fleas because it bothers them that much okay the other pets may not be itchy because the fleas really don't bother them that okay. much so mm -hmm. always check all pets in the household all pets need to be including indoor cats mm -hmm. need to be on flea and tick control all year round right. so there's new medication now out apoquil is one and apoquil is a basically it binds up one of the enzymes that continues the itch scratch cycle so imagine Reese here, okay, her skin gets damaged and allergens get in, whether it's the flea bites, whether it's pollen, whatever it is, okay? Mm -hmm. And it sets off a whole cascade of, of events, right? Mm -hmm. Inflammation, all these proteins, all these cytokines come out and she gets itchy, so she scratches. Mm -hmm. And the scratching damages her skin more, right. which allows more stuff to come in, right? And you got this cycle. So when we have something like Apoquil right here, the Apoquil medication actually takes one of those enzymes out of that equation, and then you don't get the signal of, I'm itchy. And so they calm down. Dog owners say within oh. four hours, they calm down. Reese's on Apoquil, so, it works very well, yes. Yeah. And it's something that she's probably gonna need to be on lifelong mm -hmm. unless you go to a dermatologist and do allergy testing. It's a game changer, I'll tell you that, for That's her. Right. We else? also have Cytopoint. 
So Cytopoint is an injection, mm -hmm. okay? So you do need to get this through your veterinarian, mm -hmm. but this works a little bit differently. You probably know friends that are on Humira or different biologics on the human side. Yes. This is very similar. It's called a monoclonal antibody, but it's for dogs. And it also does the same type of thing. It takes a different enzyme or cytokine and binds it up so that we don't get that sensation of itch altogether. One injection can last up to six to eight weeks. So when someone sees their dog itching, the first thing they should do is call their vet Absolutely. and and they'll be able to uh, narrow down what what the cause is. Right. They can talk about, you know, does this happen just seasonally? Does it happen year round? We can look for fleas and ticks. Another thing while you're waiting for the veterinary appointment, when they come in from outside, hose off their feet with cold water or take huh. a baby wipe and wipe it off. That a lot of times will remove a lot of the allergens. Okay. Right. And that'll make it less itchy until you can get in and start talking with the veterinarian about what's really causing this. Ah, oh, wonderful advice. So contact your vet if you have any problems. <laughs> and uh, Reese believes in the allergy medication. So. <laughs> well, she looks a lot better yeah. from what you were saying with yes. her not having hair. And yeah, it can make a huge impact not only on their quality of life, but the human animal bond too, because right. you're not kept up at night. Right. You see a dog who is happy and full of life and enjoying life. And that's the important thing. Yeah. Thank you so much, My Don. Pleasure. We yeah. appreciate your help. Gourmet cuisine, breathtaking views, and a vibrant space to connect and enjoy. Skyline Club Indy, 36 stories high above downtown Indianapolis. Join the club today and enjoy an elevated experience. Take part in a full schedule of events and special gatherings. Skyline Club Indy, a place to celebrate. Let's let Sam know about something even more urgent than his morning coffee. Hey Sam, did you know it's kitten season? Right now, thousands of kittens are in shelters across the nation, and they're in need of love and care. If you foster a kitten, even for a week, you'll be giving them the chance to grow up and find families of their very own. What's in it for you? You'll get to start your day with a smile, and your social posts will be way cuter too. Save some tiny lives today. Visit bestfriends.org kittens. Continuing now with Grateful Rescue TV, Pamela Terhune, the founder of Grateful Rescue and you adopted, took in a dog that had not one problem, but it's something like 25 problems. Diesel, tell me about Diesel. Diesel, oh, Diesel come from the Boot Hill, Missouri, from a shelter that was closing down, Patty. Wow. And this dog was chained up before he went to that um, rescue. And uh, he was tried to be, they tried to sell him to a research lab. He wasn't even healthy enough for them. He wasn't healthy enough to go to he, a research lab. He wasn't even healthy enough for a research lab. Um, and then while they're clearing out, of course, uh, other rescues that are stepping up are going to take the healthy dogs that are ready to adopt, right, and Diesel right. was going to be overlooked and put down because he, he does have heartworm. Okay, so Diesel was going to be euthanized. He was, yes, he oh was, goodness. and he, he's a wonderful dog. Um, he, he's one of Reese's best friends. They play <laughs> together all the time. Um, so what we did, we, um, we took Diesel and we had a fundraiser and uh, raised money for um, Grateful Rescue, and in this case, for Diesel's treatment. Let's take a look. I came here today to paint a picture of me and my dog, one of my dogs, Artie. I fostered him, he's a cruelty case, uh, seven years ago when he was eight months old and this is the day that um, I got him and we were on our way home. So today we're doing a fundraiser for Diesel. Diesel is a dog that came from us from the Boot Hill, Missouri. And Diesel was chained up all of his life. He has, he's heartworm positive and they had tried to sell him to a research lab and he wasn't even healthy enough for a research lab. So they um, put it on Facebook and asked some of the rescues to help, and nobody was stepping up for Diesel because he needed so much care. He also needs a hernia surgery. And I fell in love with him. I fell in love with his photo and, um, and stepped up to take him because I know we have a wonderful group of volunteers and supporters that would help us and today what we're doing is a fundraiser for Diesel. Everybody's painting a portrait of their, of their pets and um, the money that's made for that goes toward Diesel's care. I donated to Diesel's heartworm treatment because, well, it's, it's necessary, he's a sweet dog. I, I give the grateful in 
other rescues and I adopt all of my dogs because there are so many dogs out there and cats that are just, they need homes, they're abused. I'm just trying to save every animal that I can. <laughs> Grateful Rescue is unlike any other rescue probably in the world because not only do we help animals, we help people. We have a lot of community services we do with children with reading and visiting um, nursing homes and hospice patients, stuff like that. So we do a lot of community service. Um, other than that, what we do is we save the dogs that are in the most need and we bring them here and rehabilitate them. We're pretty much uh, just wherever we're needed. We'll take surrenders, shelters, where, wherever the need is the greatest. If they want to donate and help out, they could go to gratefulrescue.org and they, they can have, all, there's all the links if they want to donate items or if they just want to donate money or whatever, whatever, we'll take it. <laughs> We're building a place where homeless animals find forever homes. A place where people connect with animals in a beautiful park. A place that brings people and pets together, building lifelong bonds. That place is the Grateful Rescue and Sanctuary, a proud partner with Best Friends Animal Society. And now on Pet Pals TV, as I promised you, we're going to talk about Yorkies. Know your breed. And I was just telling Linda, Linda Ship, that 15 years of doing Pet Pals TV, and I don't think we've ever done a story on a Yorkie, so this is wonderful. People need to know, I always say a Husky is different than a Chihuahua. They have different needs and different, you know, instincts. Tell me about a Yorkie. First off, this is... This is Louie. This is Louie. Louie's nine years old. Oh. Um, he has done agility. He loves to do agility. He likes to, loves to play. Okay. Yorkies as a breed, are odd because they're big dogs in little bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. At, well, Harry's a big dog in a little body too. But these are really tiny. How, how much does he weigh? Seven pounds. Seven pounds. Okay. And that's as big as he's going to get? Yeah. Because he's nine years old? Yeah. Okay. And I just did a little reading to check up on this. They were bred initially hundreds of years ago to be, they were like mousers in Scotland. So tell right. me about that. They were bred to be ratters. Ratters, okay. Mouse to get ratters. mice and rats. Okay. And in the sawmills or the uh, linen mills, they used them in the world wars as uh, message carriers. Because they're small, they could. They go were through. little, and they could go through tunnels. Now, okay. when they originally developed the breed, they were like a 22-pound dog. Oh. The Americans were the ones that bred them smaller. Okay, to sit on your lap. Right. And look cute. The other thing that you were telling me is you, you were a breeder of Yorkies yes. for some time. You don't do it, not doing it now. No. But you bred them as pets, and you don't think they should compete in, in shows. Tell us about that. Okay. We wanted to breed show-quality pets. Pets. So that somebody could buy a Yorkie and have one that looked like it could go in a show if it wanted to. But, and they could. But. But the reason we didn't want them shown is because half of a Yorkie's score in a show is based on their coat. And it takes 18 months to grow a show coat. So for 18 months, they'll either have to be in a crate or have their hair tied up. Um, and it takes 18 months to grow the coat. Then right. it takes another 18 months to get a championship, which is why people show them, is right. to get the championship. Oh, my. And so we would sell our babies with limited registration so they could not be bred, yes. so they wouldn't end up in a puppy mill, right. and they can't be shown. Okay, that is a responsible breeder. That is a responsible breeder. Well, you are a good boy. You are a lucky boy, too. You are, I guess I have to give him back, don't I? Patty's belly. He, he Patty's loves belly? His, his chest. He loves his chest Oh, rubbed. he loves your chest rubbed? Oh, well, you know what? He wants to go back to mom. I can tell that. Thank you, Linda, for all the important information. And uh, we'll have more. We'll put it on our Pet Pals TV website, and uh, we can talk about this, and we invite you again. Responsible breeding. Know your breeder. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Louie. You were beautiful. This is Tucker. Um, when he came, they had a uh, Pam had named him Ringo. Um, we had got him from a puppy mill, and he was the last one left, um, and he was actually a 
close to not not surviving because he had what they thought was ringworm. He had like no hair around his eyes or his snout. And he was about eight weeks old, um, very lethargic. And like I said, they were treating him for ringworm uh, with their own concoction. And so uh, they called me and asked if I would be willing to try and take him. And I said, yes. So I went up to Burn and picked him up and took him to the vet and did not have ringworm. He had uh, kind of a, a skin, bacterial skin infection. And so we treated him and I told Pam I'd foster him and I became a foster fail. <laughs> so he's now about a year and a half. He'll be two in May. And his, uh, the vet said that he probably will not get all of his hair back, but uh, he would have scarring, which you can see he does have some scarring, but he is turned out to be a beautiful dog, a happy dog. You help save animals from puppy mills. Tell us briefly about that. Yes. Um, I'll, I've got in good connections with them. You know, I don't like what they do, but I keep friendly terms with them so that, um, you know, they'll call me when they're done with the dogs or if they have puppies that they can't sell, then um, they'll call me and I'll go up and get them. Um, I know one time, well, I was with uh, a couple women and we went up there one time to get a couple dogs. We came back with 11 and that's when Pam took those. Um, so, you know, that's just, it's a sad situation. And, and you know, if they, if I didn't get them, uh, a lot of times they just kill them. Treated him back to health and so now he's, he's ours. <laughs> Anytime that um, I have a puppy mill call me and ask me if they would take a dog, young, old, sick, um, Grateful Rescue is always ready to take them and, and help them in any way they can. And I think that's amazing that, you know, every dollar that is donated to Grateful Rescue goes to a wonderful cause. Now, let's say you missed an episode of Grateful TV or you want to see one again. Ah, we got you covered. Where did they go? GratefulTV.com. GratefulTV.com. And you can see all of these episodes. Yeah, you can do a binge watch. <laughs> Reese's commenting on us <laughs> talking. She's going to take a nap. So where do people go again? GratefulTV.com. And if you want to learn more about Grateful Rescue, you could go to GratefulRescue.org. And we thank you for joining us on Grateful TV. And Pamela's getting all the kisses. Oh, we love you, Reese. And we love you, Harry. And we love you. And we appreciate you um, spending this half hour with us. And we'll see you next time on Grateful Rescue TV. What she said. Mm -hmm.